On May 11th, 2014, I would receive a call that would change my life forever. And this is the exact spot I was standing when I answered that phone call that said, your father has just died. I froze. I remember just saying, okay, and then hanging up the phone. And then it went dark because I didn't just lose a father. I lost a mentor and I lost my hero. The next day, I fly to Ohio. I spend three weeks there just taking care of all my dad's things. I would grow up more in those three weeks than all 32 years prior. And I'm so thankful that I had my sister and my brother-in-law there because without them, I would have lost my mind. But the real trouble wouldn't start until I got back home. And this is the place I would come home to. This is the place where I would fall into the deepest, darkest depression I had ever experienced. Now, by this time in my life, I thought I knew what depression was. I figured I'd been through it a bunch of times. I usually blamed it on money. Like, hey, if I had more money, I probably wouldn't be depressed. I was really just sad and angry. This was different. This was paralyzing. Most days, or just spent in my room. It took a lot to get me to leave my room. If it wasn't for my son and some great people in my life, I don't know if I would have left. I just sat here waiting for something to happen, waiting to feel something. I had no purpose. I didn't have a goal. As far back as I can remember, my dad wanted to be a stand-up. He never did it, and that's super sad because to this day, he's still the funniest person I've ever been around. But I never thought in a million years that I would try stand-up. And then one day, on this exact balcony, my best friend Hillary would say something that would put in motion the greatest journey in my life. She said, you should do stand-up. And from that moment on, I was hooked. I'd spend most nights watching YouTube videos and comedy specials. I even started to write down jokes. And I'm a terrible speller. I even researched where to take a stand-up comedy class. And you know what? I found a place. And then I set a date. Sunday, January 25th, 2015. And I remember exactly how I felt when I was pulling into that parking spot this exact parking spot that I just pulled into right now. I was excited, I was nervous, I was scared. I mean, I was terrified. But I felt like I had purpose and I had a goal. The night before my class, I remember being so excited. I couldn't sleep. And I kept thinking about how I was gonna introduce myself when I walked through this door right here. The only problem was, I never got out of the car. I beat myself up in this exact parking spot for three hours. I beat myself up so bad that I was hyperventilating crying. I was ashamed and I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I went home and told everyone that I did the class and it was great because I had told them all I was going to the class. But that lie wouldn't last long. I would take the class next week it was great, I would tell everybody I lied, and then the real journey started. Now let's fast forward four and a half years. And at that time, I was the supporting act booker at this comedy club. I had just gotten back from doing three months on tour with my buddy Big Irish J, going to Boston for three weeks, Canada for three weeks, Wisconsin, Seattle, Portland. I was on cloud nine. And then I got a text message in this exact spot from a local comedian saying, hey man, are you still the booker? And I said, I think so. And boy, was I wrong. The next day I would properly get fired. Was I mad? Yeah, but there was something 
deeper going on. I had a secret. I didn't know if I wanted to do stand-up anymore. The road was difficult for me. Don't get me wrong, it's an experience I'll never forget and I will cherish forever. But I missed my family, I missed my friends, I missed my son. But I was too afraid to tell anybody. I didn't want to let people down. People believed in me and they worked really hard to get me to that place. But I know I didn't want to spend the next 10 years on the road. And once again, I was lost. That was the thing I was supposed to do. That was the thing that was gonna make me happy. And for the next six months, I would fall right back into that dark place. And then quarantine hit. And it got real bad. We started to make uh, YouTube videos at the house to pass by time. I didn't want to be involved in them. And then once again, my friend Hillary says, you need to do something. Why don't you film the videos? And in this exact spot, I filmed my first video and I fell in love with it. And here we are. So why did I tell this story? The honest answer is, I'm not sure. I just know that it's really hard out there right now and people are having a very difficult time. And I know my story isn't that bad. Some people are gonna watch this and go, he hasn't had it hard and that's okay. If there's a few takeaways from my story, it's that one, depression is beatable. I believe that. But I also believe you can't do it by yourself. Whether that's with a professional, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother-in-law, your grandma, your ex, or even your best friend. Everybody needs help. And that's okay.